Hello everyone and welcome to this week's tutorial. First of all, I would like to thank you all for all the support. I'm amazed by how well received these tutorials have been. And as a proof of that, we are close to reaching 1000 subscribers, which is just astonishing for me and I'm I'm really proud and really thankful for that and I have to thank all of you for that. Also, uh, another celebration. Tomorrow is my birthday, so I figured what screams birthday louder than balloons and confetti gold foil. So I made this and I'm gonna show you today how to how to recreate this scene. And there's also going to be a surprise at the end of this video, so make sure you stick to, to the end. And also in this video I'm gonna I'm gonna cover look development a bit. So Without further ado, let's jump into Houdini. Okay, so here we are inside Houdini, where first of all I needed the font. So I created the font note and I wrote 1000 here. I didn't change everything else because I'm lazy. I extruded the, the text. I converted it to a VDB. I smoothed that VDB a little. Then I converted back to polygons. And here I use the remesh node because what I observed with Vellum is that it gives more natural result when it has this sort of ra random but even distribution of triangles as opposed to, to quads because this gives like the cloth freedom to move in more various ways than just those edges that are 90 degrees uh, one from the other. So yeah, I remeshed it. After that, here I'm just adding some UVs. Here is how I'm creating the spread. Now if you are watching, especially like older tutorials, you will see various implementation of what would be called an infection setup. And while I think that that is a great way for you to, to understand better VEX and it's a great first step into writing your own like custom solvers, if you want to do to achieve that effect really fast, you can use the Pyrosaur spread, which initially was a node that's designed for spreading, spreading uh, fuel on the surface so that it it burns and that fire spreads across the surface but of course we can misuse it quote unquote to create any spreading effect that we can use so for that here i just manually selected some points and i've initialized the temperature to one after that here i just added a node you can use burn in order to visualize the spread and I just uh, decreased the cooling rate and I played a little bit with the noises here to get a more, a more random result. And this is how it looks. And now we have what are, we are previewing here is an attribute called burn, which we are going to use. Now from there here is just the default uh, here is just the default vellum, vellum balloon I've, I've initialized and here I created a custom, a custom dop net for the vellum because I found, I found it easier to, to manipulate it like this and inside here I'm having a vellum object with the default I'm sourcing the, the geometry and the constraints for it and here I have a sop solver and this subsolver is pointed towards constraint geometry. The default here would be just geometry. And you need this in order to access the constraints and not the actual geometry of the, of the cloth. And how do I know this is that if I look into the geometry spreadsheet, you can see here that we have collision geometry, constraint geometry, geometry and patch geometry. And what we need is the constraint geometry. So that's what I used here as the data name. And now we have access to the to the constraints inside of it. Here, in this sub solver, I'm object merging the pyrosaur spread, so I have the burn attribute. 
then I'm transferring that attribute from from the points to the from the points on the surface to the points on the constraints. You can see here are our there are our our volume constraints. I'm promoting that attribute from point to primitives because I want to manipulate rest length and rest length uh, is a primitive attribute. And here I'm, I wrote this piece of X, which on every frame initializes the rest length as the original rest length. This is what this attribute is, the, le the rest length at the uh, beginning of the simulation, the original one. And to that I'm adding the burn attribute multiplied by a really small number so it's not going to explode. Okay, and with those things in place we have this result. And this is the underlying balloon simulation. Now if we go back to the soft level, here I'm inflating back, I'm inflating a little bit the the gold foil so it's not going to to protrude into the into the balloon. I'm doing this by, by adding the normal multiplied by a small number to the position. And here is a couple of tricks I'm using in order to get more randomness out of the Voronoi fracture. Now the Voronoi fracture, if you don't know, is a node that takes some points and creates uh, fractured pieces in the in the center of those points. And the first trick I'm, I'm using is on the point side. I'm adding some some color noise onto the onto the scatter surface and then I'm using that that uh, color as a density attribute to get more variation out of the scatter node okay and the other trick I'm using is I'm adding some noise to the surface but I'm making sure to bind export that noise into a parameter here I've called it noise and make sure it's a vector then I'm doing my fracturing and after the fracturing, using another point VOP, I'm subtracting back the noise and this results in more jagged and, and random edges on the model. But this also messes up the normals, so what I'm doing is I'm computing the normals on the original surface and then I'm attribute transferring that onto the fractured pieces. And this is how the fracturing was done. From here I'm creating pack primitives because I want to create an age, an age attribute and I want to have that evenly across each piece. I don't want to have to have any kind of difference on the surface of the piece. So that's the way I, I did this. I created some pack primitives, then I initialized the, the age to zero. And now inside the solver I'm transferring the burn attribute back onto onto those points from our source spread simulation and then in this wrangle I'm checking if the burden has increased more than 0 0.5 and if it did I'm starting to iterate the age adding one one for each frame that has passed since the burn has increased uh, over 0 0.5 and one more thing I did here, while I was creating this scene, I, I've observed that the pieces were peeling off before the, the area was like completely inflated and I wanted it to look more like the inflation is what is causing the peeling. So I added some delay before the attribute transfer. I tried a few values, values before landing on non 10. So I'm using that time shift here for that. After the, the age attribute is has been created in the solver, I'm unpacking, making sure to transfer the age back. Now I'm point deforming the fractured geometry using the Wellum simulation here. 
After that, here I'm just computing the velocity. So I have some velocity going into the second valence simulation. And here is where I'm separating the simulation geometry from, from like the deformed geometry that's just deforming. And how I'm doing this is here I'm using this expression which deletes all of the points which don't have their age equal to zero. And then here on this side, because I want to source these vellum pieces and I want them to exist only for, for one frame after they are activated, I'm using this expression, which checks if either the age is equal to zero or age is greater than one. And this will only leave me with one frame when, when the pieces are activated. And it looks like this. You can see they only exist for one frame. Here is just the default vellum cloth. I just decreased the density to make them more floaty and I decreased the band stiffness so they bend a lot more and look a lot thinner. Here I'm just adding some, some null notes which are gonna come handy later in this solver, you will see. Here I just, I'm just adding some velocity based on the normal, so as these get, get sourced and start to, to simulate, they get a little bit away from the surface. And that prevents weird collisions and makes the simulation overall cleaner. And then all of these go into this volume solver, where I just decrease the gravity again to make them look uh, less heavy and more, more floaty. And I've also added uh, sub-steps and increased the constraint iterations because if you don't do this you're going to get those those weird soft, sort of stretchy vellum, vellum looking errors which I don't like and are not accurate. So this is what's on the, on the surface of the solver and inside I've added a vellum source in order to source each frame these, these pieces that we separated here and I pointed them to the geometry and the constraints for that geometry and I'm having some pop wind where I'm just adding some noise and I decreased the swirl size to, to better match the scene okay and then I'm merging the separated deformed pieces with the simulation pieces together and I'm caching those here then I'm adding a material and here I'm just taking the, the original balloon simulation caching that adding a different material to that and this is the effect Now, for look development, I use some materials which unfortunately are I'm not allowed to distribute. So for this scene, I replace them with some noises. So you get similar looking materials with the default octane nodes. This this is, will be an octane scene, but by, by the way. Okay, for the light I'm having an HDRI which again unfortunately I'm not allowed to distribute but you can try with your own and as of lights I have one light which just affects the backdrop and creates this nice, nice sort of gradient and then I'm having another light lighting this from above and then another one lighting this from below and it was the HDRI that gave it the, the contour. We can try you can try using a color here but it's going to look a lot flatter. So this was it. Thank you for watching and I really hope you enjoyed this. It's, as you can see it's not that complicated or scary to to achieve this type of a setup using Vellum. And the surprise I was talking about is that because we are really close to reaching 1000 subscribers 
and also because tomorrow is my birthday I wanted to surprise all of you so this project file is going to be available for free on my patreon you will just have to to download it from here the link is going to be down in the description and I guess this was it for this week thank you once again for watching see you next week and bye bye